Hi, everyone. My name is Mary McGuire. I'm a project manager with the national nonprofit, the Rural Development Network. Our physical office is located in the Miskasiwa Skygen, known as Beaver Hills House or Edmonton. We are located on the traditional territories of Treaty 6 and Métis Nations Districts 9 and 10. I'd like to thank our hosts, the Nahiwa Cree, the Nitsubi Blackfoot, Salto, Métis, Diné, and Nakota Sioux, and many others whose traditional lands we stand upon today. So the Rural Development at Work, also known as RDN, the acronym, is a resource to rural and remote communities and partners. Um, and so we support building their capacity by developing evidence-based tools and resources and supporting the implementation and evaluation of projects within rural, remote, First Nations, Inuit, Métis communities across Canada. So I'm here today to talk about the Shelter Pulse project, which I'm honored to have been managing for the past couple of years. And I would actually like to start by sharing a little explainer video. So it, it'll kind of give you a bit of a snapshot of what the project's been all about. And I'm gonna pull that up right away here. Rural shelters are often stretched thin for time and staff. So imagine having a database of resources to enhance supports and services right at your fingertips. The Shelter Pulse database hosts a collection of research-based, trauma-informed policies and procedures. These valuable resources were developed in partnership with rural and remote shelters from across Canada who came together with the shared goal of empowering shelters with the tools they need to enhance their policy development. The policies and procedures are customizable to the unique needs of each shelter and community. And the platform offers a comment function to provide feedback, ensuring the documents remain relevant and accessible. If you're in the women's shelter or gender-based violence sector, we invite you to create an account with the Shelter Pulse database to access the policies and procedures. Visit shelterpulse.ca. Shelter Pulse, building capacity for rural women's shelters across Canada. The Shelter Pulse database was initiated by the Rural Development Network and Mountain Rose Women's Shelter Association and funded by Women and Gender Equality Canada. Homeowner. All right, so that gives you a little snapshot of what went on with this project and what went into it in a very condensed format. Um, so I actually um, would like to just acknowledge that Shelter Pulse would not exist without our valued shelter partners from across Canada. So the many rural remote women shelters involved provided their expertise, their experience and feedback throughout their projects or throughout the project and also collectively shared their policies and procedures um, so that we could consolidate them all and streamline those policies and procedures to then bring into the database. They also participated in our needs assessment survey at the beginning of the project so we could better understand what they were lacking in terms of policies and procedures and what um, they wanted us to support building out a bit further. And they provided us, like I said, with copies of their procedure and policy booklets. And uh, we consolidated that information and we assessed it for gaps and uh, did additional research into either, I guess, for lack of a better word, beefing up those policies or procedures or creating ones that just simply didn't exist yet, that would be um, really important for uh, shelter, shelter spaces and operations. So uh, many shelter partners also participated in review sessions of key policies and procedures for feedback as we move closer to launching the database. Um, so the database uh, did launch and go live March, 2024. 
And I'm not even kidding. Just yesterday, we hit 60 uh, registered accounts. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I wanted to come and chat with you and kind of give you a bit of a demo about it. Um, this might be a database you will all find help helpful, as many of the policies and procedures are likely adapted to any shelter spaces beyond women's shelters. So if you hear from another sector, um, that that is fine too. You might find some sort of uh, benefit from registering accounts. And right now, all the policies and procedures and access to them, is it's free. So um, I always like to plug that. So again, visit shelterpulse.ca if you want to register. Um, and like I mentioned, I believe we have developed 74 policies and procedures um, and have broken them out into categories. So there's the intake, admission, discharge category, staffing and human resources, governance, programs and services, children and youth, indigenous inclusivity, gender expansion, safety and security, and basic needs. Um, so next, I'm going to actually just pop you back over into a shared screen and show you a bit of a live demo of what the database looks like um, once you register and you can kind of see how easy it is to navigate as well. All right. So as you can see, I'm already at the login page. However, you would just go to shelterpulse.ca to just access the database and create an account. So you'll see it right away, there's a button here. So um, you just click on that and then you'll be able to uh, create your account. So I'm just gonna log in right away. And you'll see there's various, uh, I guess, sections within your account you can go to. So there's the dashboard and that kind of gives you an over like an overview of what you've downloaded. Um, you can see I've downloaded quite a few over here over the demos and the time I've been doing all this um, policy and procedure shelter pulse work. Um, there's also forum posts, um, just one for now. We don't want to like overload folks. So we just have a welcome message in there right now, but let's just get to the more exciting part of it. Um, and that's some policies. So all you want to do is just click on policies and then they'll all come up here, as you can see. And you can just scroll through them like this if you like. There's about five web uh, pages of the policies and procedures. If you go um, to the very right-hand corner here, there is a download function or there is an add to download list. I kind of consider it like a online shopping for policies. So if you just want to shop around and add things to your cart, you would just click to add to the download list. And then once you're ready to just download everything, you would click on my download list. And right now I just have, I have just, a, I guess an example here of a policy book, and then you could just download the entire folder onto your downloads. But for now, I'm just going to show you a policy. Um, or how to download a policy and what it looks like. It's it's a very user-friendly, and at least in my opinion, it's user-friendly uh, database. So hopefully you experience the same. And that was, that was the direction we were trying to go also with the web developer. We wanted to really make sure that um, it was just very straightforward. It didn't need to be any special bells and whistles. The one thing that was really important to us though, was that these policies and procedures were um, downloadable into Word documents because these are baseline policies. We try to keep them kind of high level and not get too much in the weeds around specific um, ways communities operate. Um, I, th I think what we've learned, one of the biggest lessons we've learned is that communities operate differently based on the, com like the needs of the clients who are coming in for supports. And there's different barriers in place. There's different ways folks even do referrals, right? So again, we wanted to create kind of a, a baseline for those policies and procedures so then folks can download them and then edit them in a way that makes sense for their organization and their community. So I'm just gonna download the 72 hour check-in. So all I do is hit download. It'll ask, would you like to export policy content or procedure? I want both. And then it downloads and I'm gonna just open up 
the Word document so you can kind of get a visual of what this looks like. Just give it a moment here. So yeah, as you can see, it downloaded the 72 hour check-in um, and you can format it, change it however you see fit. Um, we have the philosophy in here um, and then just various things around like the safety and empowerment, trauma-informed care. So these are all like the, I guess the principle, the guiding principles um, that supported a lot of the development of these policies and procedures. And uh, so yeah, confidentiality, and and then a statement just about the agency you'll also notice that we've highlighted anywhere we reference agency and that's just to make it a bit easier for organizations just to scroll through and then pop their organizational name in there um yeah and then it goes into the rationale and purpose a policy statement and then we pop into the procedure um you'll also see in uh kind of like this purpley color we've highlighted um supportive uh, like other supportive policies and procedures that can kind of tie in to certain areas within uh, policy and procedure. So, um, so yeah, you just kind of can scroll through. And then at the end, there is the approvals piece. So the date created, and then who is it approved by, um, and the date and the revisions made. Um, so yeah, you can list any of those in here. So that's what it looks like once you download the policy and procedure. Um, and I wanted to kind of pop around here, even just on the website. So if I go to Shelter Pulse, and I, I'm wanting to just really plug some of these additional resources that could be helpful for folks. And you don't even need an account for this. You don't need to register. You just go on the website. So if you go into resources, you'll see policy guidelines. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down here. Um, so there's these policy primers we've developed. There's example policies. There's a terminology brief about um, the various different kinds of language that's used within the sector. And there's a policy template. Um, and so I'm going to pop into the policy primers here. So you can see these are really, these were developed earlier on in the project to with the idea that they could possibly support folks in their organization um, to um, figure out how to try implementing some of them, maybe what would be considered more complex policies, where there is uh, maybe a culture shift that has to happen internally. So I, I do encourage people to check these out as well, and you can download them and take a peek. The idea um, for the Shelter Pulse Project, so our funding has wrapped up uh, March, uh, just at the end of March, and now we're kind of looking at a second stage. We're searching for funding around how can we provide organizations with support to um, implement these more complex policies. So around um, intersectionality and inclusivity, diversity, accessibility. So we're just kind of in the process of that. Um, what sort of training um, around change management can we provide uh, the operational management of shelters in uh in really trying to integrate the knowledge and practices um, into their organization. So I just like to pop over there and show folks that um, I'm gonna go back, hopefully I'm not making everyone dizzy by bouncing all over the place. Um, so I'm gonna go back into the 72 hour check-in one and pull it up. And so if you just click on it and you don't really care about downloading yet, it's all laid out here. I mean, you could really just even copy and paste it from the site if you don't want to download it. Um, so here you go. You can just scroll through the policy and procedure before downloading if you wish. And then we have a section here for feedback. So we kind of want to keep this open, uh, right? So folks who are working in the sector can, if they identify anything that looks a bit whack or needs some sort of um, improvement. You could provide feedback. Um, you can see here it says, please explain any gaps you see. Um, do you find this policy helpful or relevant? Um, is this possible or is this policy feasible to implement? So those are just a couple other um, things you could uh, check out on the Shelter Pulse database. And I'm just going to stop sharing now.
Um, and, and that is ultimately the end of my quick little live demo and presentation around Shelter Pulse. Please, I encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions. My email is Mary, M-A-R-Y-M, as in Mary, again. So Mary M at ruraldevelopment.ca, or just go right to the website, shelterpulse.ca, and register an account. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope to hear from you folks.